So the next uh, speaker is uh, someone that I think many of you uh, will know, Setwin Ung, who uh, started as one of the in-office volunteers with Cambridge Global Health in 2019 before becoming the programme support for Myanmar in November 2020. Between 2006 and 2019, he worked for a range of local and international non-governmental organisations and development agencies in Myanmar, focusing on the health and local governance sector. As many of you will be aware, there was a military coup in 2021, and Myanmar has since become one of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a healthcare worker. It's a, a programme that's particularly close to my heart because I was invested in a, a programme there for, for a number of years, and it's an incredibly challenging place for friends and colleagues who are still uh, living and trying to work there. So that has been instrumental in enabling CGHP to pivot from being uh, directly there, the health partnership, and, and to continue providing support to healthcare professionals in Myanmar facing these enormous challenges and pressures. He has coordinated the creation of teaching and clinical management uh, videos for colleagues working in the most difficult of circumstances, and the tutorial project is carried out in partnership with the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health. We have a well-established programme out there from a neonatal and paediatric uh, community as well. As Seth will explain, the larger part of CGHP support is through the Myanmar te Telemedicine Partnership that's providing really vital access to healthcare services involving uh, Burmese uh, diaspora and other healthcare staff exchanging learning and experiences and working collaboratively to provide services to vulnerable populations in areas of Myanmar that are really severely impacted by the conflict. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Sue. Uh, you have already introduced a lot of things about Burma and Delhi Medicine Projects. So, so good evening. And today I'm going to present about the Delhi Medicine Project that CGHP has supported since uh, 2021. So uh, the project locations, the project is in, the, in Burma, previously known as Burma, it's now Myanmar. So basically, you see the pictures of the, how beautiful my country. So Myanmar is a very beautiful country and, and very rich in natural resources and also ethnically diverse country. But the downside is that uh, we have the longest uh, civil war, war in, the, uh, in, 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 in the world. So and since uh, independence, uh, 1948, most of the time the country was under the uh, military regime and, and recently in 2021, 20, 2021 February there was a military coup and all the uh, reforms, social, political, economic reform initiated by uh, previous elected governments were gone. So after the coup uh, many people across the country the against and the military military coup and they has taken up arms. So as a result, uh, uh, military Honda uh, killed, arrested thousands of people, as well as the healthcare workers, healthcare professionals such as doctors, nurses across the country as well. So due to the uh, coup, COVID conflict in 2021, that all the made my country situation got worse. Uh, in terms of healthcare expenditures, the military Honda, they only spent uh, 240 million pounds for uh, 55 million populations in Myanmar, compared to uh, British uh, UK head expenditures, the Myanmar head expenditure is kind of the peanut. So actually, uh, Cambridge Global Health Partnership, uh, we had a long-standing partnership program in Myanmar from 2013 to 2021 until the coup. Uh, that project, that partnership program called Cambridge Yangon Trauma Intervention Partnerships, that partnership uh, uh, improved the skills and, and ex expertise and ex skills, experience and knowledge of the doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals in in pathology department, and ICU department, and orthopedic department in in government hospitals. But unfortunately, after the coup, we stopped 
that program, and CDHB has changes, uh, changes the approach working with, uh, uh, working and supporting healthcare worker in Myanmar. So the telemedicine project uh, that CDHB has supported just started in June 2021, and with the uh, healthcare, uh, small group of healthcare workers uh, who, use, who refused to work under the military administrations, they established a telemedicine project uh, because uh, I think this is at the time the established the telemedicine project was a, a really right time uh, because had uh, hospitals were closed and many uh, healthcare worker was arrested. Uh, people didn't have a chance to, to assess the health services in Myanmar. So the telemedicine program is is kind of the providing the alternative mean of health services provision during crisis. And also, we are also aiming to scale up that project uh, program in the future as well. So this, the pictures in that this slide show about the uh, our work in Cambridge Yangon Trauma Intervention Partnership Program during 2013, 14, 15, 16. So why those? Telemedicine project is is uh, uh, very much uh, why it's so important, and basically that telemedicine project is beyond health services. It's kind of uh, building the uh, foundation for sustainable model of future health service delivery across all Myanmar. So this is why it's so much important. And then another, secondly, uh, you know that after the military coup, uh, many uh, people are at risk. So vulnerable patients who are at risk of seeking and uh, treatments from public hospitals under the military administration can get tele consulta medicine consultation from our telemedicine project. So thirdly is that the, uh, uh, the patients and individuals who are living in the very remote regions in, and who are not able to uh, 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 afford to, for travel expense, uh, they can assess the uh, telemedicine services from our telemedicine projects, especially uh, IDP populations, because we have nearly, well, we have more than two million pop IDP populations in Myanmar. Those IDP populations can rely uh, and can assess the tele a medicine service from our telemedicine project. And then also, uh, lastly, why I, the project is so important is that, you know, that the many healthcare professionals who, who are not allowed to who practice by military hunter, those, uh, military, uh, those uh, healthcare workers uh, can, and can, can continue to provide health services is to patients safely and remotely through our telemedicine projects. So uh, this is one of the doctors uh, in the pictures who refused to work under the military administrations. She continued to, to provide uh, telemedicine services through our telemedicine project. Why? I uh, CDHB is is proud to very much proud to support the uh, telemedicine project. Basically, all the uh, telemedicine team member in Parma in Myanmar, they are uh, very dedicated and very committed, and risking the life to provide uh, the health services. And then also the the project is only two years. We have very limited resources. So with limited resources, uh, the telemedicine team, team they a, a use innovative approach and create some um, applications and also some platforms, uh, applications and platform tailored to the local context to provide the healthcare services uh, to uh, the patients who have different IT knowledge and literacy. And the third, thirdly, 
uh, is that the uh, the 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 telemedicine team member uh, they feel that they have not been forgotten, and then also the war is still with them because the all the N NHS staff from here. Uh, diaspora across the uh, war, they still support them. So they feel that the telemedicine team and the doctors and nurses in Burma, they feel that they have not been forgotten. And the war is, is together and, and show solidarity with them as well. And the last uh, thing is that the uh, continuous learning and sharing the best practice that tele our telemedicine project could facilitate the continuous learning and sharing best practice and experience among NHS staffs and Myanmar team. So what we achieved so far? So uh, we have already given 150,000 consultations so far to, to nearly 60,000 patients since June 2022, since June 2021. This is a big figure. Uh, and then when we started the project, we, have only, we had only 16 volunteer uh, medical doctors and nurses. So now we have 190 volunteers and project staff, and we are operating a four oh, general and 24 special, specialist clinic nearly 10 days, uh, uh, 10 hours uh, daily. So the, basically, uh, Facebook is a very popular social media platform in Myanmar. So we use, uh, social, uh, we use our uh, Facebook to uh, share the head education posts, uh, nearly 60 head education posts per month in different ethnic languages because uh, Burma has more than 135 ethnic languages. So we need to provide the head services and information in different ethnic languages. So we are uh, developing a, a head education post in different eth ethnic languages. So, so far we have our Facebook page has uh, 440,000 followers and every month and 1.6 million total views and share a month. This is our reach to uh, uh, populations in Myanmar. So, uh, recently we uh, established a, a Vajra clinic in village. That's a pilot project. This is a combination of the uh, remote consultations and, 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 and remote consultations, it's a kind of remote consultations and uh, physical examinations with the assistance of the volunteer on the ground. So we est start establishing the Vajra Clinic in Village pilot activity to enhance and remote healthcare accessibility of conflict affected populations uh, with the valuable support of local volunteers. So this slide shows uh, our patient uh, uh, numbers and the flow chart. And then uh, the third one, the second one is uh, our Facebook page. We have 440,000 Facebook follower. Uh, that uh, the one is about the uh, the patient feedback, everybody, every patient and everybody can give the comments and, and suggestions on our telemedicine Facebook page. So everybody can provide, uh, if they have a bad experience, they can come and give the bad experience. If they have a very good experience, they can give the uh, good comments here. So before concluding my presentations, and I would like to, uh, say thanks to our volunteer in telemedicine program and also our supporter and donor, including Tropical Head Education Trust, which has been supporting since the telemedicine project started. And then East of England, England Stroke Telemedicine Program, who gave some advice and experience and sharing the experience when the project has started. And then the uh, Global Heart Roots, uh, uh, those, those groups give some kind of 
uh, monitoring and education, monitoring and uh, evaluation support. And then lastly, and uh, we would like to thank the Royal College of General Practitioners, uh, who share the experience of quality assurance uh, practice in telemedicine program. So thank you so much. This is uh, the presentation. Thank you.